Hey guys, it's Dibbles here, the Baron's Finest. Uh, I'm back, sorta. I've had a lot going on. My phone, for some reason, won't record video. I don't know why, so I haven't been able to do anything for like about a month, if not a bit more. I, and I know like, the last stuff I did was like the ARG coverage, but I'm sorta back. I'm Videos will be scarce this month, but they'll be coming as I can get them. I do have some new format deck profiles I'll probably be doing. Um, I just haven't been caring as much for Yu-Gi-Oh though as of late. I've been more caring for Vanguard. But my locals wound up having a uh, cash tournament. And I thought, you know, there's no harm in trying to win money. I guess is the best way to put it. So I wanted to decide to play. And I played uh, Spiritual Beast or Ritual Beast or Beast Hammers or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I wound up getting... Third place, uh, my matchups were, let's see here, I played Klee round 1, that was a 2-0, I played Yosenju round 2, that was a 2-0, played Necros round 3, that was a 1-2, because I clumped games 2 and 3, and in game 2 when I finally had momentum, he had Decree. Uh, round 4 was Klee, yeah, round 4 was Klee. Uh, then we wound up going to top cut, and in my third, in my on my last round, uh, I wound up playing against Klee, which is the same player I played against in round one. This time he got the game on me. Iron Wall is a pain. Everybody cited Iron Wall. I didn't expect to see Iron Wall, but everybody was citing Iron Wall, and it kind of threw me off guard. And I was a little on tilt, but not really enough to like John about it. But I want to play Ritual Beast, and I'll go and show you guys the deck list. This is the list I played. Um, I know some changes I'm going to be making to the side and extra, but the main, in my opinion, was absolutely like the best I could have probably done it, if not like maybe one or two card changes. But to start off with, uh, we play two Apelio, the basic bump a guy up, like b bump your dudes up for the turn by 500. It's a lingering effect, so even like dudes summoned after you use his effect will get the 500 boost, which I absolutely loved. Uh, something I wound up doing that's a little bit different, I chose to play only two Rampengu, and that's because there was a uh, certain card I wound up playing that a friend, or not really a friend, but like a certain European player played in his main, which I absolutely fell in love with the idea, played it in the event today. It did work, but it also came out a lot, but two Rampengu was fine, I didn't really know, I didn't notice a difference, aside from like one round, but that round I just clumped anyway. Uh, three Hawk, the heart and soul of the deck, this card goes, the deck just kind of dies. And then the card that I wound up getting some eyebrows raised at me and people have already started calling me bad or not as optimal for playing it. Uh, two copies of Summoner Monk. Uh, Monk really has a lot of interesting plays of the deck. It gets you into, uh, well I guess like a fun combo that you can do with this is say you jump, you summon Monk, pitch a spell, Get Hawk, yeah, get Hawk, Hawk vanishes, whatever, overlay these two into chain, detach Hawk, stack Lara, and you just set yourself up for the next turn. That's one of the many plays you can do with Monk. Uh, I didn't have the best rank 4 options for Monk, and that's and I feel like I'm going to be changing my extra deck specifically just for this card, because I absolutely loved Monk throughout the entire day. And then to round up the beasts, I play the one Dolphin, I hate this card, but we have to play it. It's good in random scenarios, but not really enough to really justify it. Two win. I use this like it was all right. The tamer I hate the most, and I'm de and I can't get myself to cut it down, but I want to cut it down. Is elder. This card's only good like in certain game states, and I hate it. Like it's amazing if you open it, but I had. Twice, I think it was, that I opened, like, multiples of these. Like, one game I opened all three. Like, I opened three Elder, Lara, Wen, and I'm like, why am I opening these? Like, I just clumped Elders. And I even played the rank 2s specifically for the Elders, and I still lost it, but it's whatever. And then the last monster I played was two copies of Lara. It should be 17. Uh Seventeen sounds right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, seventeen monsters. Uh, maybe the elder, but that'd be like the only monster I change. For spells, I chose to play the three upstart goblin. Uh, 
you know, 37 card deck. The best spell to pitch for Monk, in my opinion. It's really good. Uh, three Emergency Teleport. I do and don't like this card. I understand why people don't like this card, but I just love it too much. Like, it, it helped fix hands that I had throughout the day. And granted, it made... And it wanted to let me make certain aggressive plays, especially like in my Necroz matchup where I wound up having to go in time. And the play would have worked had he not had the Valkyrus and just been able to like get momentum because that was where I just clumped all Tamers or all Beasts. Uh, double MST. Guards, guards MST, I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> one Regeki, one Book of Moon, and then one Gold Sark. Sarko is so powerful in this deck. It's an amazing card. I love it. I love it to pieces. It's, it's just a great card. I never cited it out. Well, maybe I said that once or twice, but I don't know. Uh, traps. Uh, I guess to go over my traps, um... Blah. I'm sorry, I ran out of breath there. I have a theory about the traps that I'm currently implementing in this deck, aside from, like, one. Uh, I wanted my traps to be hyper-responsive, because I feel the deck is better as a responsive deck compared to a, uh, preemptive deck. And by that I mean, like, let my opponent make their plays and then force them to, like, dish everything out compared to, like, and, like, just take away everything from them compared to trying to stop them. And sir, I feel like the nature of the cards of this deck, like Steeds, for example, are cards that are better designed to do that. So, for the only two one ofs I wanted to play, I played the one Bottomless and the one Ring of Destruction. I felt these two were going to be the best one ofs I could have played, and I was right. Uh, I didn't steal any games with Ring, thinking about it, but I wound up like forcing certain cards out and or had to use it to bait certain cards. Plus it's also an out to the Jin lock, which I tried to do, but my opponent wouldn't follow my bluff. So uh the two one is and I know some people are gonna ask like how would I think of bottomless. Bottomless is amazing. Almost every time I resolved it I won that game, regardless of how early or late it was in the game. Bottomless is just so powerful. Uh, double Fiendish Chain. I prefer this to Breakthrough Skill. You need to stop certain monsters from attacking. Hitting certain effects is huge. Especially like in the Necros matchup. Uh, double Ambush. Card is so good. I love this card. I, I just don't know what to say. Like, ambush is probably one of the better cards. Uh, triple Mirror Force. I was the iffy on this at first, but after playing so much of this deck today, I realized I absolutely love the Triple Mirror Force. Like, Mirror Force is probably the best the second best card, like, or the best card aside from Steeds, you have so much destruction, so much respon like, responsibility, this deck is just nuts. Like, you're, you, in theory, shouldn't be getting hit, like, at all. And I just love how this deck is, like, hyper-responsive to that. I really feel like that's the way this deck should be played. Don't, like, let your opponent waste their resources and then punish them for it. Because you're going to be able to like get resources back anyway, so... I don't know, that's just how I view it. Uh, for the extra deck, I played the... Yeah, okay, just want to make sure I'm in frame. I wound up playing a basic 8 ritual lineup, uh, or fusion lineup. I don't agree with anybody who ever says you need 3 dolphin. 3 dolphin is terrible. I've never needed it, even after I rompangu it. And the other two you just need three of. I really, I went through this a lot through Rompangu, but not really like this at all, but still having three of this was just nice. So that's it for the nine, or the eight fusions. Um, as for the Ixies, the Ixies I, I'll admit they probably weren't the best lineup, and I have some idea of how I'm going to change it. But for the uh, extra, or for the Ixies, uh, one Cavalry, one Cowboy, one Dweller, one Shane, one Exiton, one Chidori, and then one number 101. Uh, in all honesty, I know some. I'm probably going to be dropping these three in all honesty. Well, this is a maybe. These two I'm probably going to be dropping though. I never had the chance to make Chidori. I won Castell every time over Chidori just because of Summoner Monk. Plus, they do about the same thing. I mean, there's some differences, yeah. Like, this hits set back row, and this is, uh, multiple spins. But I almost feel like it's almost, in a sense, better just to get rid of the card and shuffle it into their deck compared to, like, just stacking their draw. 
Especially in the Necros matchup, it's like, oh, you stacked my Trishula, okay, that's not a big deal, or, oh, you, like, I mean, like, granted, yeah, they're gonna have to hit, like, they can just get it back with, compared to Castell, but Castell still gets rid of it, and they have to use a search card compared to just top decking it again. But these two are, like, probably gonna be going out. I'm probably gonna be dropping this for the Castell and this for a Ragnar Zero, because Klee is a hard matchup. Klee and Necros were my hardest matchups, like, throughout the day, but, I mean, even then they were all close. And this, I chose to play uh, Cavalry over Digestal Phoenix, mostly because I don't like the idea behind Phoenix. I feel that if you're making a rank 2, you're probably in a terrible game state anyways, and you need to make something that can give you back momentum or try and keep your presence strong enough to the point where you'll have, mo where you'll be able to recreate yourself momentum. And this is a card I feel can do that, because it's 2k, you can't kill by battle, and it gets rid of opponent's monsters. But that is personal philosophy, I understand why people like, uh, I can't, Phoenix, I'm tired, it's 5 in the morning here. But that's it for the, uh, extra deck. But like I said, I might rest, I'm gonna rest with the rank 4s a little bit, just cause, like, the rank 4s were both good and bad, and I want to castell throughout the entire day. And then for the side deck, the side deck was the weakest thing that I had made. I threw some, of the, like half the stuff I threw in here and I need to alter it. I'm not sure what I'm going to replace, but uh, for the side, double Kaiku, the Ghost Destroyer. I sided this in, but, well, primarily just for Necroz. And I sided it, but didn't draw it. Kind of stunk. Uh, a card I was iffy about playing was two Artifact Lanceia. I thought I was going to be seeing a mirror match a bit, or people like, okay, sorry about that guys, I, apparently the recording stopped, but um, I don't know where it cut out, but double Kaiku and double Lancea, yeah, thought I was going to be playing a mirror match, but wound up not, so I chose to play the Lances, probably going to be cutting these just because the mirror match is not really as relevant to my area, might play these at a bigger event, not sure, um, one Dark Hole, Probably going to be bumping this up to 2, because like I said, I feel the deck is better as a responsive deck. And this was nice to see whenever I did see it. One dimensional fissure, I don't like main decking the floodgates, I prefer side decking them, just because like there are times where it's like, oh, I, like, I feel the opponent can just play around it. And this was better on the side, I never saw this all day though. Uh, the next card, I'm dropping, I hated this card, 2 chalice. My theory was to play this almost in a, like, well, not quite in a sense, but, like, almost a mentality of Klee, where it's like, oh, you can u also use it on your dudes to get rid of problems. Because you can make your, like, ulti at Pelio 3k and run over a lot of things in the meta. You run over every, you run over or into every Klee. So, plus Klee doesn't play towers anymore, because the banlist hits but so that was my theory behind it i'm dropping these though these are coming out in a heartbeat a lot of stuff is just coming out but i have no idea what i'm putting in uh one macro i sided it a decent bit but never drew it uh probably my mvp of the side actually was fairy wind this card came through like a champ i love this card just like it won me right around well it would be like it'd be all my, it won me like all my Klee matchups I did win, and it just answered like it also helped me against Yosenju. It helped. It just helps. This card is amazing. I love this card, and it kind of made me realize just how much I need back row destruction. So I'm probably gonna be adding like Twisters in here as much as I hate that card. I would play Dust Tornadoes, but I don't want to lose a Royal Decree, and I've been seeing a bit more Decree as of late, and I got Decreed a couple times at the event. Uh, double Mind Crush. I don't know how I feel about this card. I feel like it's just a necessary evil right now, and I don't want to play it, I don't like the card, and I, but I feel like I just have to. That, that's literally my only, I hate this card, but I feel like I just have to play it. I'd rather be playing something else over this. Like I would drop this in a heartbeat, but I don't know, maybe I'm just, and granted I also played the card terribly wrong, I have not really properly played with Minecraft in the longest time. And then the last card was a, uh, Theorio idea, and I'll say that my theory was right, but my execution was wrong, and I never actually got the card off, but the card would have helped had it actually been able to resolve in any instance I could have, was Double Ceasefire. The theory behind me playing Double Ceasefire, well, 
I guess in a sense, like, you could say I was signing this for Shadal, but against certain matchups like Klee, I want to win by, obviously you win, like, this deck has, is a deck that has to win the game by hitting the opponent's life points to zero, and this takes away just, like, it, every time they have two, every two monsters is just, like, taking away, a, like, a scout surge from them. It takes away, like, so much possible presence of game from them. It's just a good card. Like, that's all I can really say about Ceasefire. Like, the theory was mainly for Cleefor, because I felt Cleefor was going to be a hard matchup, and I was right about it being a hard matchup, but, like, the idea was just, I just never saw it. Like, it always got MST'd whenever, like, and then they'd explode. But I guess to go over, like, things I'm probably going to be cutting from the side, I'm going to be cutting those, more than likely. Cutting those. I want to say that's about all I'm cutting. Uh, this might be a thing, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm not the best with Mind Crush and Ceasefire. I don't... I don't know. I, I just hate Mind Crush, but it's a necessary evil in my opinion. The card just didn't pull through for me today. I, pl I But I admit, I also played it wrong. But yeah, I'm going to be dropping these. I don't know what I want to play. Probably at least two. T I'm probably be turning these into twisters, but I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna turn these into, or if I should just keep these. But um, yeah, that does it for Ritual Beast. Actually, uh, I wound up. I whatever my match was already like. Like I said, I wound up getting third or fourth. Technically, uh, we wound up just by the end of the day, not really caring because third and fourth got the exact same price support. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for the deck profile, guys. Um, I'm really sorry. I've been gone for, like, a month now. Uh, you'll be seeing some deck profiles. I'll be doing some more Car by Vanguard for at least a little while. Just because that game has more of my interest. But you guys will be seeing a Mermail deck profile. If you guys want to see Jump Doppel for new format, I can do that. But it's not a whole lot different. I actually don't even know if the main's different at all. I don't remember, like, what I put in the last deck profile I did. Um, I was gonna I, I was gonna profile you send you, but I don't really feel like profiling that. There will be a box opening of uh, the World Superstars set. I can tell you that because I did pre-order a box of that, but I don't know when my box is actually gonna get here. Um, but yeah, I think that's actually gonna do it for this deck profile, guys. Uh, sorry I've been gone for so long, but. I'm going to try and come back. I can't come back at full steam just because I have a lot going on. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this deck profile, guys. And until next time, peace.